All right, the second one. Let's look at an object placed between the focal point and the center of curvature. So uh, in the demos, remember that the focal point was where that image flipped over and became inverted. As soon as you were outside of that focal point, either for the red and blue ball or for my face coming away from the mirror, as soon as you hit that focal point, the image was huge. And then beyond the focal point, excuse me, the image was still big but getting smaller and it was inverted. So let's do that one. There's our mirror. There's our principal axis. Here's our focal point, center of curvature. Now we want to put an object between the focal point and the center of curvature. There's my object. All right, let's try some paraxial rays. Simplest one, the one I always like to do first, just a paraxial ray that comes straight through here. Um, and then what does it do? And you say, well, it just goes right back through the right through the focal point. Happy day. Um, what about the ray that goes first through the focal point and then to the mirror? Instead of going to the mirror and then through the focal point, let's go through the focal point and then to the mirror. What does that one do? Well, I claim that it comes off as a paraxial ray. How do I know it? Reversal of light, light rays. If we came in, reversed its direction, came in, hit the mirror, it would go through the focal point. That's how you know that. Uh, and then finally, one uh, through the center of curvature. So along the line between the center of curvature and the tip of this object, it's going to come out like that and it's going to reflect back on itself because angle of incidence equals angle of reflection, and the angle of incidence is zero because it's perpendicular to the mirror. Comes back on itself, comes down over here. So where do these appear to be converging? It looks like right about here. If we did a little bit careful diagram, uh, we'd get a, a little bit better uh, convergence. But it looks like they're coming together right about here. So we're expecting an image that is uh, right about there. Tell me about that image. Well, is it real or virtual? Do the actual light rays pass through it? Yes, they do. They come off the mirror and they come here. They all converge here. We don't have to do extensions of the rays to figure out where they're converging. So it's a real image. So this is the first example of a real image that we've talked about so far. Is it upright or inverted? You say, well, it's flipped over. The object is above the axis. The image is below the axis, so it's definitely inverted. Is it enlarged or reduced? Or does it look like this uh, image is a longer arrow than the object? It looks like it's longer. So it's enlarged. Produced by um, concave mirror with the object in between the focal point and the center of curvature. All right, so here's a diagram from the book of the same thing. The center of curvature, the focal point, the object, and drawing the same kinds of rays that we just talked about. We get a real, inverted, uh, real, inverted, and enlarged image. All right, let's do uh, C, the outside the center of curvature. Let's see if we can do this one. All right, focal point, center of curvature, focal point, and now we are outside the center of curvature. Here's my object. Let's draw a couple of rays. This one's parallel, paraxial ray. Hits a mirror, reflects off the mirror, goes through the focal point. <coughs> Happy day. Let's do the one that passes first through the focal point and then hits the mirror. Okay, that one does this. 
and then one that passes through the center of curvature. Let's take this one, starting from the tip of the image, goes through the center of curvature here. I'm going to have to extend the mirror out here. Hits the mirror, reflects back off, comes back up like that. So where do those three rays appear to converge? Looks like, so this is one, two, three. If we back up, it looks like they, they all came pretty darn close to, uh, con well, we nailed it, actually. Here's the image. Tell me about that image. Real or virtual? Do the light rays pass through it? Yes, they do. It's real. Upright or inverted? Well, here's the object. It's above the axis. The image is below the axis. It's inverted. Enlarged or reduced? Well, it looks like this image is smaller than the object. And in fact, that's true. It's reduced. Uh, produced by a concave. So the only difference between C, where we're outside the center of curvature, and B, where we're between the focal point and the center of curvature, is what? It's just the fact that the image is now reduced instead of enlarged. And we saw that actually in the video, where we talked about um, when I was standing right at the center of curvature, my image in the mirror was about the same, was the same size as, the, as my, my actual image. And I said that the magnification is 1. Actually, it's minus 1 uh, because it was inverted. But uh, then beyond that center of curvature, you saw an image that became smaller and smaller. All right, which of the following best describes the type of image formed when an object is placed at a distance greater than the focal point of a concave mirror. Real, virtual, or no image? Well, for both cases, both B and C, it was um, distance greater than the focal point, uh, and both images were real. Imagine that you're sitting in the back of a classroom, back row of a classroom. Your instructor is standing in the front of the room with a large concave spherical mirror. What do you see <clears throat> in the mirror as your instructor walks from the front of the room to your location, all the while the mirror is facing you? In this case, you're the object. So your instructor is at the front of the room with a concave mirror moving toward you. So you're going to start out being beyond the center of curvature of the mirror. So what are you going to see? You're going to see a small image inverted and real. So then as the, the mirror comes closer and closer to you, when, it, when the mirror is at the radius of curvature distance away from you, then your Im image is going to be unmagnified. It's still going to be inverted and real, but unmagnified. Then as the mirror gets closer and closer to where you're at the focal point, that image gets bigger and bigger and bigger still inverted, <clears throat> reach the focal point, and then the image is going to flip and become upright until, until it comes to your face. So I think D is the one that does that. My image initially inverted, that's true, and the image gets larger as the mirror approaches, that's true also. And after passing through the focal point, the image turns upright and begins to shrink, but is still enlarged as the mirror continues to approach. So that's what you'll see. All right, convex mirrors. Let's do a demo. And this is a convex mirror. So it's bulging out in the middle toward us. And I'll be doing the same experiment we did with the convex mirror and uh, with the concave mirror, that is. And I'll be backing away from it and looking at what the image does. So I'll start with uh, my nose up against the mirror. It's an upright, virtual image. Um, proceeding out to the focal point, still 
an upright virtual image. So the radius of curvature, we're still upright and, and virtual. And then beyond that point, um, still the same. So it's a little bit more boring than the concave mirror. All right, convex mirrors now. 25-9, draw principal rays to locate and characterize the image, real, virtual, upright, inverted, enlarged, reduced, unmagnified, produced by a convex mirror. All right, here's our mirror. Here's our principal axis. We're gonna have a focal point, center of curvature, but the silvered part of the mirror, the polished part of the mirror is over on this side. So we're gonna place an object um, somewhere, and, and in fact, we haven't specified where we're gonna put it. We're gonna put it just anywhere. The reason is that, as I said in the video, the convex mirrors are boring. They do the same thing no matter where you are. <laughs> So let's, let's just put it at some random place and see what we get. Um, in fact, I don't want to put it there because it's too close to the focal point. So let me put it a little further away. All right. Now, let's do a paraxial ray coming from that object. The, this ray If we look at that line from the focal point, then this ray is going to go out like that. We talked about the focal point and the focal length of a convex mirror being the place where the reflected rays appear to have originated, seem to have originated. So that's what happens to this guy. We can also look at this, this ray that hits symmetrically here, comes off like that. We can also look at the one that appears to come through the center of curvature. So if we imagine drawing a line between the center of curvature and the tip of the object here, then we're going to be about in that direction. And it's going to hit perpendicularly to the mirror and reflect back off to come out this way. So we've got three rays. That's enough to try and locate an image. Um, one, two, three reflected rays. Let's uh, see where the image is. Well, these are obviously not coming together, so we're going to expect a virtual image. And where's that image going to be? Well, we just have to extend these rays onto the other side of the mirror and see where they converge and sure enough they look like they converge right about here. So that's our image. Our object is here, image is there. Tell me about that image, real or virtual? You say virtual. Upright or inverted? Well the object is up, the image is up, it's upright. Uh, enlarged, reduced, or unmagnified. Now that image looks smaller than the object, so it looks like it's going to be reduced. Reduced image, reduced by a convex mirror. And that's true no matter where you put the object. It, um, kind of a boring situation. All right, a convex mirror produces a virtual, upright, and reduced image regardless of the location of the object, as we just said. Here's a diagram uh, from the book that essentially does the same thing that we just did. And um, this is a motorcycle helmet that is a convex mirror. That's shiny surface and you can see a wide angle view of um, everything, but everything seems small in it. There were, everything's reduced in this convex mirror, but you can see a lot of space. And uh, imagine you're sitting in the back of the room, your instructor is standing in front of the room with a large convex spherical mirror. 
What do you see in the mirror as your instructor walks from the front room to your location? My image, uh, right side up, gets larger as the mi mirror approaches. Is the image right side up? Yeah, yeah, it's upright, right? Uh, right side up, it gets smaller as the mirror approaches. Assuming an image initially inverted and then right side up, that's, that one can't be true. Image initially inverted and then right side up, that's not true. Image initially right side up and then inverted. So there's no, no fancy stuff going on here. And as the mirror approaches, the image is going to get larger. You get closer and closer to that mirror. As it's farther and farther away, you just see tiny, tiny little, little images. So convex passenger side mirrors allow a wider field of view, and, and, but produce reduced images. So if you have a convex mirror, some of them are, are plain mirrors. There's also another effect that causes the objects in the mirror to appear closer um, but if they're convex, it certainly makes that happen because the image in the mirror is small, smaller than it would be in reality.